Welcome to this WSA 9 Environment Matters Special Report. I'm WSA 9 Chief Meteorologist Topper Shutt, along with meteorologists Caitlin McGrath and Michaela Lucero. Tonight, we're talking about the birds and the bees. Mm. And the butterflies are <laughs> flying friends who, like us humans, depend on a healthy environment in order to thrive. Now, let's begin with birds. Now, they are vital to our ecosystem. We rely on birds to control pests, maintain habitats, and pollinate plants. And bird watching is one way to connect with the natural beauty of the DMV. Birders, as they call themselves, are a diverse and dedicated group of outdoor lovers. And there's more of them than you think. In fact, I'm one of them. Birding is a great way to spend time outdoors with friends or family with little or no investment. Oh, that bird always does that. You don't have to drive far from home to plan birding trips. When we don't get bird songs, we're going to get bird calls. Now we asked Tyke James, the president of the DC Audubon Society, why he loves birding. To me, it brought a sense of responsibility to build trust, to build connection, to build coalition, and to build power. Because often when we're out birding, we're seeing the conditions of the land, and we're connecting the history of the habitat with the history of the community. Oh, that one. Oh, I see it. Birders not only use sight. Oh, that fly catcher? and sound to identify birds. They also use behavior. Literally, what is the bird doing? Is it just sitting there perched? That's a behavior. Is it jumping around in the tree? That's a behavior. Is it pumping its tail? That's a behavior. Is it messing with other birds? That's a behavior. And yes, there's an app for that. Oh, yeah. Somebody Another posted the picture. DC Bird Chatter, mm -hmm. and they will share very generously what birds they've seen, where they've seen them, and typically they'll add in a picture in there just so you can be like, oh, this is what it looks like as well. The sharpshin has like that wide open eye. Most birders are very dedicated to birding and are always on, like Maria Elena Montero. I always knew what birds were around me. I grew up in Tacoma Park where there's a lot of trees and a lot of backyard birds. And I just became more curious about birds that I wasn't seeing as regularly. Sometimes there's a moment or a certain bird that ignites your passion. There's something that happens where you can't get it off you. Something turns on, something sparks your interest. We always call it a spark bird. Is that the bird that gets you into birding? For me, it was a belted kingfisher. The Audubon Society will provide you with binoculars. Now, I brought my own and my trusty Peterson's A Field Guide to Birds book. Do you know that there are 18 million birders in the United States? It's not just your grandma doing it. It's becoming pretty popular. We're here in Northeast DC. We cross this bridge, we're in Heritage Island, which is a man-made island, by the way. Cross another bridge, that's Kingman Island. And we saw incredible birds today. Uh, great blue herons, uh, egrets, uh, a bunch of warblers. What's weird is that we're in the shadow of RFK. I asked Taiki for his top three favorite places to go birding in the district. Kingman and Heritage Islands. It's a really great city park. You get to see a lot of the river as well as some dense forests. So you can get a lot of mix of some water birds and shore birds while also getting warblers and wood songbirds. Big fan of Kenilworth Aquatic Gardens. And then Anacostia Park by the, by the roller rink. There's a bridge that you can get on and it gives you the ability to see trees at the canopy level. Some of my favorite spots in the DMV include Huntley Meadows, just south of Alexandria in Virginia, Brookside Gardens in Wheaton, Maryland, and now I'm a fan, Kingman and Heritage Islands in DC. We had quite a successful day. White-throated sparrow, song sparrow, common grackle, northern perula, black pole, black pole warbler, northern cardinal. Now for me, birding is just a hobby, but some birders are seriously committed. Adam Longo shows us how two brothers in Arlington, Virginia are helping document and protect the birds in our area. You flew to the lower part of the snag that's obscured by the leaves. We've created this guide, not only for people to be able to identify and know what birds they have in their local parks, but also so that they can protect them and foster ideas of conservation amongst their peers. This place appears pretty good. Either it's either really good or there's no birds there at all. And then we started going birding every single morning for maybe like from 7 to 12. We are at Long Branch Nature Center in Arlington County today with the brothers. 
Max and Dante Julius, and they have come up with this essentially a, a, a bird field guide of the birds of Arlington. So first of all, how long have you guys been doing this and, and what is drawing you to the bird world? Um, so I have been a bird watcher for about four and a half years. I mean, I've always been obsessed with biology and the sciences, <laughs> but <laughs> there is this bird, the wood thrush, whose call specifically connected to me, I guess. Um, my brother has been a Major nature photographer, photographer for a long while. There were two Carolina wrens. So you guys have rubbed off a lot on each other and, and oh, then you yeah. complement each other yeah. in, in certain ways. And so you, you go out on these nature walks together and you're looking for unique birds and sort of the home birds of Arlington County. Yeah, we look to also like just enjoy them and just uh, like see what they're doing. It's like, was watch them and see how they're behaving and every time every time we go out is always something new we see a different behavior or a different bird we never seen so right up here there's a cardinal tell us about this field guide that you've put together we hope it to be a little bit more than a field guide we've started it already um but right now it's uh a list based on uh, data we've seen that's been collected through eBird, an application where you kind of like, you know, submit uh, birds that you see uh, so anyone can access them uh, for data purposes. And we've looked at that and compiled a list based on that, based on what we've seen, um, and then also based on a few other sources, and we've compiled a list of all the birds in Arlington. You know, from birding to birdies, <laughs> it's no secret I also love to play golf. And golf courses offer so many excellent habitat opportunities for a wide variety of birds. That's right. Golf courses across the DMV are immersed in nature. TPC Potomac at Avenel Farm in Montgomery County underwent a major renovation back in 2008 to make it more environmentally friendly. And shortly after TPC Potomac reopened a year later, the golf course was recognized for its sustainability. It's a good story to tell our members. It's a good story to tell the community that, yes, we're a golf course, uh, but we're also a, a place where wildlife can really flourish and people can enjoy the property knowing that it is environmentally compliant in, in every way. From water management to wildlife management, there are six certification components that need to be met. Environmental planning, water conservation, wildlife habitat management, water quality management, outreach, education, and chemical use reduction, and safety. Frank Lavadera, the Director of Environmental Programs for Golf at Audubon International, emphasizes the importance of environmentally conscious courses, especially in urbanized areas. Golf courses do more than just provide recreational uh, facilities for golfers. Uh, they provide uh, habitat for wildlife. Uh, they're able to uh, clean up uh, runoff stormwater that comes from outside the property, runs through the golf course, so especially in the summer and in an area down near Washington, uh, provides a cooling effect because that green acreage. Audubon International performs site visits before awarding certifications and TPC Potomac passed with flying colors. They really do a, a great job and that's reflected in their certification. Audubon International encourages courses to reduce managed acreage of the course that requires chemicals, irrigation and manpower to fuel and maintain. And instead, increase the amount of naturalized areas around the course, which TPC Potomac has over 60 acres of. This is an area that doesn't get any irrigation, uh, no fertility over time. Uh, we allow the, the grasses to come up. Uh, they provide really nice accents from an aesthetic standpoint, but they also provide a, a really good uh, uh, wildlife habitat uh, for, for all of the, the organisms on, on the property. Small mammals like fox and deer thrive on the property. And of course, being Audubon certified, uh, birds. There are 27 bluebird boxes on the property, as well as a number of wood duck houses and even bat houses. We have bald eagles, we have uh, red-tailed hawks, bluebirds, woodpeckers, uh, everything that, uh, that flows through the, the eastern seaboard uh, from a migratory standpoint a little bit more inland, we'll, we'll certainly see it at some point during the year. So it gives our, our members, uh, those who play the golf course, a chance to interact with, with uh, those, those birds uh, in a way that they may not have an opportunity to do, to do otherwise. I saw a bald eagle down on number 10, and to have that kind of interaction with, uh, with the bald eagle on the property is, is really special. 
TPC Potomac at Avenel Farm is among 18 golf courses in Maryland and 32 in Virginia that are certified by Audubon International. Now, bees can serve as an indicator of a golf course's overall health because healthy golf environments foster healthy bees and pollinators. And Michaela, you got to look at how we can all help support our local honeybees. Yeah, that's right, Caitlin. Coming up next, I caught up with some local beekeepers to find out how all of us can make our yards and our gardens more pollinator friendly. Welcome back to our Environment Matters special report on our flying friends. I know winter is just getting started, but spring will be here before we know it. And there are things we can all do now to be more friendly to our pollinator friends. I spoke with beekeepers from Virginia and Maryland to learn more about the importance of local honeybees and how we can help support them. Honeybees, bumblebees, even wasps, they're all vital to the health of everything from plants to people. Martha Keene, secretary of the Virginia State Beekeepers Association, took us into her backyard to teach us more about the importance of these powerful pollinators. They pollinate crops, and there are certain crops that only are pollinated by honeybees. Almonds, apples, strawberries, there's so many. They pollinate $15 billion worth of crops every year, according to the USDA and they play a key role in getting food to your plate. They say that one of every three bites is directly attributed to a pollinator, which is significant. So how can you help the bees stay busy? Eric Malcolm, president of the Montgomery County Beekeepers Association, gave us some tips. Let your yard grow a little bit. Don't necessarily worry about having this perfectly manicured lawn all the time. Um, there's a lot of beneficial flowers that the bees need that if we have these manicured lawns, those are gone. And for people without yards. Plant pollinator friendly gardens. Virginia Mountain Mint, for example, it's a native. And bees of all kinds and butterflies, all the pollinators love that. And it's super easy to grow. Simple steps to help these little warriors in our complex ecosystem. We've heard the campaigns to save the bees, and that's because of the backbone of our ecosystem. Bees and other insects like butterflies help pollinate and keep our plants alive and blooming every single year. So what can we do to support local pollinators? We brought in the experts to verify. Natasha Garcia Anderson, wildlife biologist with the DC Department of Energy and Environment, and Keith Tigner, Virginia State Apiarist or bee expert. They say it's about going back to basics, plant native. When you pick out trees or flowers or bushes, planting things native to your area will make you a bee's best friend. If you're this big, a plot, like a tiny yard could be your whole world. And if it's full of just grass that does nothing for you, it, you know, it's not going to help you. If there's stuff for you to forage on, um, if, there's, if there's plus for you to live in, we always say native plants for native pollinators. Now, we typically think of honeybees right away, but Keith says tons of little guys benefit from native plants. We have um, several hundred bee species in the mid-Atlantic area. Having pollinating sources, pollen-producing plants, that helps all of our pollinators. And not just our bees, but the uh, butterflies and other, other insects that, that take advantage of, the, of that food source. And if you need any more convincing, Natasha says it's just easier to care for native plants. They kind of take care of themselves. Like, you don't need to invest in a whole bunch of um, pesticides to keep them looking great because this is where they're from and this is what they're used to. You can find something beautiful and local and native, and I can attest this one came from my balcony, and it is easier to take care of. We have a list of native plants wherever you are in the DMV on our website, WUSA9.com. And when in doubt, just ask someone who works at your local nursery for some help and take a look at the label. They're often labeled as being native to your area. With your Verify, I'm Abby Larico. Well, coming up next in our Environment Matters special report, saving the monarch butterfly. You cannot have monarch butterflies if you don't have milkweed. How you can help with this endangered species when we come back. Welcome back to our Environment Matters special report on our flying friends. Now fall is called the season of hope for the monarch butterfly. From Mexico to Maryland, efforts are underway to save these now endangered species. And it all starts with planting and harvesting milkweed. Scott Broom shows us how the monarch butterfly is finding safe harbor in local gardens. Oh, there goes one. Monarch butterflies, 
they are gorgeous, but this summer they were declared an endangered species by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. The plant they depend on. Here in North America, milkweed has been all but eradicated by modern agriculture. And as a result, the monarch butterfly population and its spectacular, one-of-a-kind annual migration to a forest in Michoacan, Mexico, has been decimated in recent years. You cannot have monarch butterflies if you don't have milkweed. Which is where people like Mike Bailey in Germantown come in. I call it my milkweed grow. And I've planted and harvested milkweed so that I can feed these caterpillars. Bailey has joined a movement to plant native milkweed in his garden. So basically we have potted milkweed, swamp milkweed, and common milkweed. Even the seeds fly and migrate. Yeah, the wind carries them in the fall of the year. Some of the few remaining monarchs found the milkweed in Germantown right away. They laid eggs, and by late September, the colorful caterpillars were munching away. And as seen in a time lapse Mike made on his phone, they then transformed themselves first into the colorful pod called a chrysalis, from which they will emerge as adult butterflies. I got one going to chrysalis right here, and I was doing time lapse. But it does not end there. So far, I've tagged 30 monarch butterflies. Mike is tagging the butterflies, so scientists in Mexico can determine where they came from. I believe a database of how these butterflies migrate will give scientists a better understanding of where we need to create more habitat. These butterflies are an important part of our ecosystem. A lot of people think of endangered species as maybe something far away like a polar bear. This is something right in our own backyards. Yes, and they, they are visitors and hopefully we will be able to see many more of them in years to come. So now with any luck, the remaining monarchs born here in Maryland and the rest of Eastern North America will be arriving in Mexico in a few short weeks. And when the monarchs return here to Maryland next season from Mexico, Mike and Kathy and thousands of others who've added milkweed to their gardens are hoping even more people will have joined their ranks, restoring milkweed for the monarchs and helping bring the monarch butterflies back from the brink. I'm encouraging the process and trying to... For Eco9, Scott Broom, WUSA9. All right, now when it comes to ducks, those birds need to learn how to walk before they can fly. And sometimes a mama duck and her duck things need a little help crossing the street. That story when our Environment Matters special report continues. Welcome back to our Environment Matters special report on our flying friends. DC is home to more than 90 different species of wildlife. And sharing a city with so many people means animals get injured all the time. But there's an organization dedicated to helping them. It's called City Wildlife, and you may have seen them shutting down some streets for ducks. Take a look. When it comes time to uh, release a mother mallard and her ducklings, there'll be anywhere from six to a dozen ducklings with her. Uh, often we're just walking them across streets and they go in and release themselves in what other water body we've brought them to. But on other times we have the mother in one carrier and the babies, the ducklings in another carrier. And then when you release them, you want to release the ducklings first into the water because if you release the mom, she may not realize that her ducklings are with her and she may take off. So you always release the ducklings first and the mom will see them in the water and they, they have a tendency to stick together as a family so they don't disperse. The mother will see them, she'll jump into the water and then she will lead them off to wherever she wants to go in that water source. So if somebody says there's a mom, 10 ducklings, she's crossing Pennsylvania Avenue. We get people out there and we will, uh, she, she knows where she's going so we don't actually lead her we follow her, but we're, when we have to, then we stop the traffic so that she can go where she wants to go. <laughs> so amazing. Well, thank you so much for watching this WUSA 9 Environment Matters Special Report. And don't forget, our flying friends need our help so they can in turn help our environment. Because environment matters. Good night.